Alright, welcome back to Terra and Victor with a little bit of time travelling because um, my microphone was muted when I originally introduced this episode. So, uh, let me summarise my original rant with the plan for this episode. Um, normally in Terra and Victor, it's tempting to think of the game in two phases. There's the peace phase where you're trying not to get killed by the aliens, stay under the hate cap, maybe you provoke them occasionally and then just endure the retaliation and go back to hiding. And then at some point, uh, you pop up with all the technology you've secretly researched, you say surprise, and the war is on. In this, in this playthrough, the, the house rules have done exactly what they're meant to do. The start that throttled our science income, because the start we do is not is not super research efficient. Throttling India, the fact that I made it a challenge to hold Pakistan, which is basically a tax on your CP from a research perspective. Eurasia is not a great uh, research power relative to the CP cost of holding it. So our research is behind. Plus, then we taxed output further by banning skunk works for a significant period of time and things like that. Plus, we constrained where we could develop our space economy. Uh, plus, we constrained how much we could put into global techs, which limited, the, which is limiting the pace of global advancement, which is what you really need to become more effective. So we've sort of throttled our science, which means it's taking a while to get to the point where you would normally break out. And all the while, the alien economy is going to keep rolling. It's going to keep rolling. They're going to build more ships, more facilities. So you kind of want to go to war to slow them down, but you just don't have the capacity to do so at this point, not effectively. So what we're going to embrace from this episode on is sort of the middle phase, uh, which I don't think I'm not sure, haven't seen talked about as much. Uh, it's sort of the the half and half, the defensive attritional phase, where you're sort of doing deniable violence for the most part. What that means is basically from this episode. When it's worth incurring hate, I'm going to continue to do so. So uh, if there is a Hydra agent on Earth, they get destroyed. If there is a surveillance ship in orbit, it gets destroyed. And if there is a transport ship incoming to drop more Hydra onto the planet, it gets destroyed. Geopolitically, I want to consolidate Eurasia because of all this sweet, sweet MC. I want 154 MCs nowhere near enough. I want 300, 400 ground-based MC of it. Um, not that far away. I want 200 in the, quite the near future. I want 300 not that, not that long from now. Um, and then the objective is throwing the servants out of basically everywhere they have so that you can't have an alien administration on Earth. All that will occasionally produce hate, which will cause retaliation. The difference from normal is that instead of just taking the retaliation, going below the hate cap and then saying, look, thank you, sir, please come again, where possible, we're going to want to bait them onto our defensive fleets of uh, missile launching ship boxes. Because if you just accept, I'm pretty sure if you just accept an engagement rather than hit engage and then shoot back and destroy some ships, that doesn't generate more hate, it doesn't spiral you. So what we can do is we can cause a minor offense to offend the aliens a bit, kill as many ships as possible when they're retaliating, and then eventually if it becomes too much for us, we just uh, fall back below that hate cap, they destroy some ships, they destroy some settlements, uh, sorry, some habs, and all of a sudden we're back to peace rebuild a couple of ships and stations, and then we do a small provocation again. And the goal here is to harvest exotics. The goal here is to limit their ability to influence Earth. The goal here is to inflict a little bit of attrition in order to slow and smooth out the curve of alien warship production uh, while we spend our time getting to the point where we are capable of fighting. I won't focus on the technologies I want to be capable of fighting because we're focusing on the economy first, with the goal in the near future being to create a defensible bedrock for our economy. That means some T3 Habs, some on Mercury, which I've just discovered is metal expensive, but we'll see how expensive it is once we go to T3. Uh, consolidating our presence in orbit, because at the moment we have not the resistance, the initiative, Earth. So we have all these stations in Earth orbit because that's how many you need to get all the research adjacent um, interface bonuses. We can consolidate this down to a smaller number of stations, which uses about the same amount of MC, but produces all the same interface bonuses, at least as much research, and has is more defensible and has more shipyards. So we can consolidate uh, Earth down, all the while, hopefully, getting to a position where we can start sending... Um, basic marine transports out to the asteroid belt to grab the most productive servant and protector at mining bases. And then just we can just abandon them because we don't go over the MC cap and inevitably the AI has done stupid shit like it has a level three, it has a level two settlement uh, with a level two mine producing not much. So it's spending five MC on a minimally productive asset. I don't want that. 
Um, it's not it's not defensible, it's not efficient, I can do better stuff with that MC allowance until it's time for Total War. But anything to slow them down at the same time. I think that's enough introduction, and that's what you should expect this episode. A lot of me seeing what I can get away with in space, while also sort of, you know, declaring that the, uh, the Earth-space border is closed, at least in one direction. That pushes back the darkness. The flame that others will flock around. So now that Sister Superior Judith... Superior Judith Howell. Forward <sighs> to how to lead. Small steps, big changes. Okay, so now self-help guru uh, Sister Judith Howe has finished talking. Uh, extended space research has finished. Exodus, who are my best buddies. Exodus are doing great. Uh, I am letting them keep Slovakia just because they're doing so well uh, and just helping out the planet. They've got molten core fission. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. We're going to need fission drives. Um, we're going to have to go... To keep with the house rules, we have to go fission into antimatter. We can't go into fusion, which is the usual no dar do fusion, it has a whole bunch of benefits. But uh, molten fission, that's okay. Our space future is still being working on, as is Diamondoids. We're about to hit alien tech. And like I said, I'm pretty confident that alien tech plus quantum encryption that we already have will give us a second hate reduction technology. I'm also fixing up that protectorate base that we grabbed on Ceres. As soon as the mine comes on there, we should see a significant increase in both water and to an extent volatile income but the real thing that's going to save our water and volatile income as is often the case is when you get to tier three habs and you get to put level three farms up which really save on the um the water and volatiles and let us repurpose it towards other purposes um, as soon as marines are ready i also want to drop on those resistance bases in on mercury we can smooth over the diplomatic consequences but that'll be additional metal and noble output i know the ai loves going to asteroids i don't um I find asteroids a little hard to defend. I like going to Jupiter. I like going all the way out to the Kuiper Belt because it takes the aliens forever to hit the location so you strain their fleet logistics. But I like being able to concentrate extraction on a couple of bodies. So for me, Mars, Mercury, Ceres maybe, and then eventually moving into the Jovian subsystem, that's what works for me. Everyone is throwing their public relations campaigns straight into the European Union. The servants are countering with 20% unity spending, so we're going to have to unleash Gaius and Pregani relatively soon to start cracking points, I reckon. Otherwise, unity is probably going to overwhelm even our uh, quadruple public campaign strat. Okay, here we are, alien technology. Delay alone, we've seen no less than 48 requests for everything from recovered databanks to simple bulk code fasteners. Blah, 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 blah. Most of this seems pretty normal. With a finite inf amount of such alien artifacts at hands, we can now only scratch the surface of their potential. We are coming to understand the alien technological superiority. Congratulations on your successful engagement with the enemy. Personnel losses were 63.5% below our average case predictions, meaning that funds reserved for death benefits and recruitment of replacement personnel can now instead be reinvested in our new reverse engineering projects. 63.5% below the average case suggests to me that they were expecting to lose... We lost one and had two damaged. Okay, so they were just a little bit more pessimistic than I was. This actually makes sense in context. Board would like to pass on their personal appreciation for your efforts. Studying the warship has been illuminating, but not immediately profitable. Technological superiority seems to rest almost entirely upon these unusual alloys or exotics, as our researchers have named them. Plus the fact they already have functional fusion drives, Siren. Uh, on the negative side, this means we have failed to generate any true breakthroughs from our reverse engineering. On the positive side, it does seem likely that with access to these same materials, we should be able to approach or even match the aliens' capabilities. We should proceed with the research to learn more. Great, so we can research exotic materials when it becomes available, uh, which we will do. We have developed only limited opportunities for new products thus far. Da da. It's notable there are clear avenues by which we can exploit the alien designs. I like it how the Institute's like... The Academy was like, the how, the how, the how, the how, the how. The Humanity First was very much, so how do I kill it, so how do I kill it, so how do I kill it? And the Initiative is very much, so how can I use it, how can I use it, how can I use it? Uh, da -da -da. Alien Computers. 25% boost to MC investment. Depending on how expensive that is. It's 5,000, it's pretty cheap. We also need ferrocyte resistance. 
but where a lot of what we're investing is MC investment. So it's a it's a complete indulgence. Because this is what's urgent, and I like to always have, like I said, always have one Xeno project running at any given time. But I'm tempted to just quickly grab, how long would that take? This keeps the three and three. That would come by November, and we haven't even got the skunk works done, and that's with advanced Pulsar finishing in July. So I'm going to put alien computers in until um, exotics becomes available, I think. Because 25% MC boost. Although we already have a significant boost, don't we? 67% already. Because what have we got? We've got 81 MC in Eurasia, 6 in the United Kingdom. China's got 1. We can't build any more. Pakistan is basically Pakistan is basically spent until we get it's it's basically just 30 wasted CP that we hold on to passively until we get Greater India and can start absorbing it. But really most of our MC is coming straight out of the Eurasian Union and it will continue to do so. Alright, I'll think about it. Alright, Maskirovka just became available which is the next MC cap increasing technology. So we're going to get that by January 2030 and that's going to give us, actually we don't need to prioritize that super heavily because it's, I want it to sort of roughly correspond with our space future. So this might be enough um, because it'll be sped up by engineering. But we also want ferrocyte resistance and alien technology and exotics and a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to keep this moving. But yeah, it's here. Okay, so the space economy, we're going to be able to gear it up in 2030. We're going to hit tier 3 orbitals and HABs. It's going to be perfect. All right, there we are. We are over CP cap. That's okay. I'm researching transnational coordination, which will give us a 25 CP boost. But that'll arrive middle of next year, especially now that we're getting the boosts and the sweet, sweet skunk works have started arriving. Nine engineering projects giving us a plus 80% on projects. That's a significant boost. And there's going to be more on the way as soon as we get more mercury facilities that can actually power the damn things. Um, and the money income from Earth so far, holding up, holding up pretty well. Um, we can start consolidating the executive here. We'll also get control of this damn army. Uh, the first division which we can move back to uh, mainland france and so the servants will stop invading people i did trade the servants this turn a whole bunch of useless organizations that i seriously hope they equip because they're worthless um, but that was able to get me generous trade which is worth like two or three crackdowns so that should at least mean that they're pointed at other people not me i didn't give them anything of value don't intend to give them anything of value um, but it's really only the protectorate who i'm happy to be like in their face, total at war all the time. Don't really need to care about this trade union spot, to be honest, um, because we're going to absorb this country eventually. When we absorb it, this will not transfer over. So, yeah, there we are. European Union secured, and that should, if I'm right, yeah, have seriously nerfed. The servants have lost MC. They're down to they're down to the worst research of anyone in the game. They're well under their CP limit. You can see we stripped a lot of the water away from the protectorate, but they still have a very strong water income. It's about a fifth of ours. And their volatiles income is as strong as everyone else put together, except for us. Actually, no, that's not true. Resistance and uh, Exodus together is worth more, but... Oof, oh boy. The one thing we have going for us in space that no one else does is we have much better, much better fissile income. Much better fissile and metals because metals are what once we start really building ships in a big way we're going to need metals and fissiles especially if we're using fission drives so there we are i will defend interest european union i've started researching forward russia uh, it will take a long time to complete we'll try and scale research we'll try and get more social labs and everything up we'll try and push that further but this is a big tech it's a 40 000 research tech but will allow us to absorb eventually all of this into the Eurasian Union, uh, which will be a nice, efficient way to acquire a whole bunch of MC that's currently in the hands of people who we don't want to have it. All right, there we are. We've grabbed a base from the resistance. We'll upgrade that straight to a settlement core, throw an outpost mining complex and a solar collector on it, and this will be yet more research on Mercury. Um, I'll smooth things over with resistance, trade them something, because that'll bump me up to like 
seven hate, I'll bump myself back to zero, take something else. I mean, I want them to have resources, but they can they can exist in orbit. I like the security of bases, they are more resistant to bombardment generally, they're easier to defend, and you get a whole bunch of resource income from having them, so I think that's worth losing the slot that you capture that you use with the mining installation. So uh, monopolizing the surface of Mercury seems like a very initiative thing to do. We've also got one in Earth orbit, Noble 22, which means we can have a look at what the Protectorate have in terms of shipyards. Okay, so it looks like all Protectorate shipyards come from Maria Theresa Station. Oh, isn't that ironic? Um, they've also got a bunch of op centers. This is a useless station. I don't like op centers. I think they're expensive for what they do. Because you're using MC to generate MC when how much MC you can use is what's capped. I would much rather generate it on Earth, which is why I'm generating a shit ton of MC on Earth. But we might take Maria Theresa away from them. The servants have much more orbital infrastructure that will be much less practical to disassemble, and they're putting a whole bunch, of, they've got marine company barracks. So we'd need a lot more marines, or a councillor, or something to take control of these stations. I think we worry about the Protectorate first. I think we strip away their shipyard. Let's have a quick look at the fleets. Alien destroyers arriving. I'm going to find out if they're surveillance or landing agents. If they're, if they're landing agents, that's okay. I'll kill the agent on Terra. Easier that way. Um, if they're doing surveillance missions, we're going to shoot them down. Three destroyers incoming. Two will arrive latter part of this year. One more arriving next year. Victor 30 is still in orbit. Let's have a look at the Protectorate. Papa 1. Okay, Papa 1. Papa 1, you're not useless. You're very lightly armoured, though. But you have an advanced pulsar drive. An Artemis torpedo bay, a 30mm auto cannon for point defense, and a 10 inch forward cannon. Well, the forward cannon is a waste, although it does force your opponent to maneuver and maybe show some side armor, but that thing is so low velocity that any sort of maneuvering should cause a miss. But then again, you need to be able to maneuver, which our chemical rockets can't really. So we're probably going to need a new generation combat ship, and then we're going to need to disassemble the Protectorate's presence in space. But for the moment, um, we could kill, or we could absolutely kill this. We could slaughter this with our existing missile ships. It just, it might kill one of our ships back. But I guess that's okay. Only question is, would anyone be able to buy the Protectorate station from me? Resistance could. I think I might go for it. See, here we go. I just relieved Miss Ayoadaev, one of her bases on Mercury, created at great expense of boost and effort, um, and all the countries that follow the resistance, but in exchange for giving her this organization that I just picked up and don't actually want, uh, along with a number of others that I'm going to use in the same way, I get generous trade, very willing to accept, and I reckon I want generous. No. I can get 15 boost for free and a generous trade, getting me back to zero, which means next time I can do the same thing with another Mercury station and continue expanding my science infrastructure. All right, I decided to scratch that grand plan because we've got another surveillance destroyer that I knew was gonna arrive and it now has arrived. Looks familiar, point defense particle beam, light mag battery, orange laser cannon. They still haven't fixed the armor problem. There's a lot on the tail, but not too much laterally or in the nose. So I think that we are going to engage this thing, probably lose some ships, attract retaliation, but again, denying those sweet, sweet surveillance missions, probably worth it. Are there two more destroyers coming in? Yes, but they're marked transport, not surveillance, which means probably Hydra operatives on the planet. And given the choice, I'd rather shoot down something that's doing a surveillance op than deploying Hydra onto the planet, especially since after Maskarovka, I do think I have to do ferrocyte resistance, because if I can protect my territory, probably in a pretty good place. More skunk works have also finished, giving us 95% engineering boost, so we're starting to really increase the pace of these. And once I get that other Mercury station upgraded, I can drop 
uh, more social, more energy, get the boost on those sort of technology areas as well. Uh, particularly energy intensive ones uh, like energy, a lot of energy requirement for the actual research facilities themselves, which Mercury obviously excels at. I'm doing uh, magnetic force manipulation at the moment. It looks like the protectorate desperately want to win the slot and are doing most of the research for me. That's okay. Uh, this is on the long line of text towards antimatter mass production, which is why I figured may as well get it done. All right, here we go. Let's hope that they agree to engage. They do. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? Spread. Cloud. Dispersed. Initial velocity 500 is fine. Priority. Nose. And then, as always, you know, the Hydra do seem to, they learn eventually. And they've definitely gotten smarter over the course of subsequent patches. But he should see this as a zero threat situation, drift towards us, and then we can fire our missiles once he's in the no escape zone, which should, should be about a thousand meters. Because he's like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna spend any Delta V dodging. There are no incoming projectiles. When what he really should be doing is establishing, denying the merge, maintaining distance. Because if he maintains distance, there's basically nothing I can do. We're about to hit a thousand meters. All right, there we are. Let's go weapons free. And again, let's keep a couple in the tube just in case we have a chance to shoot at something that comes at us for retaliation. Missiles launching. I'm gonna cease fire at 14. 12. Just to keep something in the tubes. These chemical rocket interceptors though, these have done great work for basically being an almost zero technology design. Like it's literally a advanced chemical rocketry engine with a basic missile warfare doctrine weapon. So other than using crates, I'm not sure how, any more, how much more low-tech you can make this. And the crate missile is basically an old Soviet anti-ship missile with a hypergolic um, adaptation for space. So let's see how we go. <clears throat> oh, his mags are firing and we have no point defense. So we're just going to sit and take it because we, we don't have the Delta V to dodge and we have no lateral armor. So I have a feeling one of our ships is probably screwed. His point defense is firing. But as before, that's a lot of incoming. So he's engaged one ship's worth of incoming, but now he's got to deal with four. We've lost one ship. The missiles are doing their final burn. This is what differentiates missiles from torpedoes. Torpedoes burn all their fuel straight away. Missiles save some for the final approach. There we go. We did overkill it, but not as much by as, uh, as before. And I reckon we'll take some hits here. Unless the battle ends before they arrive. Nope. Okay, it waited until, it was smart. It waited until they had all arrived. Another point one exotic aliens are above the hate camp. We will get retaliation, but we shot them down tiny amount, tiny, tiny amount of exotics. But the Valiant Phoenix is down. I'll take it. Okay, here comes the retaliation. So the aliens are launching Victor 66, which is launching from Venus. Interesting. There's no alien station around Venus. There is a short range protector at S. I'm Interesting that everyone, uh, we've got stations around Venus, including a skunk works. I'm just, I'm happy. I'm happy that even the factions I hate are better at doing this than they used to be. This game has so much, it's already a fantastic game. It's already a fantastic game. There's nothing like it. But once the human factions are genuinely capable 
of going out there and making the space game as multi-faction and complicated and having competition between the human factions. So you have to, because here's the thing, right? Fighting the aliens is something that you're going to do on a large scale only once you're ready for total war. Because you could fight them early, and I'll do a playthrough we fight them early, but generally if you're going to beat the aliens, you're going to do it later on. But having the human factions be more active, more aggressive, more capable in space will force you to, while you're dealing with the aliens, also be building low-tech and medium-tech ships in order to continue winning the space race. And with everyone dispersed on different asteroids, it just has huge potential. Anyway, what am I doing now? I'm taking... I have four escorts. I reckon we take a shot at this guy, but to avoid it being a complete and total loss uh, to the point where we can't respond if the hostile fleet's in Earth orbit have a problem with us, what I will do is I will split one or two of these vessels off, maybe two, divide the fleet in two, Yeah, probably divide the fleet in two so that they retaliate twice rather than once. Because then what we can do is take the take Noble 23, transfer that to, say, Low Earth Orbit 2, refuel it there, uh, and then hopefully we get two retaliation missions targeting our fleet, not one. So the hate goes down twice. That's the theory, at least. Maybe we limit our losses a little bit, although these ships are getting a bit long in tooth. Um, and as soon as Diamondoids is finished, now that we have advanced pulsar drives, add some adamantane armor, point defense lasers, it might be time to move over to a monitor design that's still using missiles, but also has point defense and more advanced armor and more advanced propulsion. These things are getting a little long in tooth. Spain, under the control of the Protectorate, now has nuclear weapons. And the United States is back up to having two armies. However, the United Kingdom has now crossed into the robotics age, rolling out all those sweet, sweet next generation vehicles, fifth gen fighters, all of that. The UK has it all. I'm sorry, UK, you haven't experienced GDP growth in about eight years at this point, but you've overtaken the Yanks in military might. Hopefully that counts for something. I've still got that uh, second Navy ready to build basically at a moment's notice. I don't think we have to push the military that much further in order to beat the objective, but just for good measure, we're going to keep going a little bit, and then I do want to fill the UK up to its MC capacity at some point. We might just split the attention a little bit, because the military is funny, haha, -ha, but more of this is what we're ultimately going to need. And here we go, first retaliation, the luminous meteor is engaging lancet fish and dolphin. We will start the battle. All we can really do is spread them out in a cloud. Let's go to full maximum initial velocity. Let's let's be really zooming to start with, because that'll limit his ability to escape. Something like that. And let's see if we can lure it. He's much more maneuverable than the destroyer, but he doesn't have PD. So. Let's see if we can lull him into a false sense of security. And wait until the last possible moment before we fire these Vipers, although in the end he's probably going to win, and if he does win, that's okay, it's going to bleed off some hate. If he doesn't, they'll send some more ships to try the same thing, and we can inflict more attrition doing this. Okay, we're taking the shots. Hold. Hold. I think we can hold until 800 meters, or at least next maneuver node. Yeah, 856 will have to do. Let's see if he realizes how much trouble he's in. He's realizing. So he's going to burn, and we're going to start adjusting our missile flight paths. Let's see if our missiles have enough DV to outmaneuver him. The answer is yes. And you don't take hate for shooting back, I'm pretty sure. 
So that's just a free kill. Which means we'll get some exotics, we'll reload. 3.1 exotics. Fantastic. Love it. Um, I really hope we get those once we finish the exotic research. I forget exactly how it works, but uh, we'll want to repair and rearm those. The retaliations will keep coming, but I got more where that came from. Oh, but the bloody Hydra have taken the mass media in the European Union away from me. I'll have to fight to get that back. The key is that we have the executive locked down, and the executive on cooldown is what really matters. Um, yeah, they're, they're not happy with what I'm doing, that's for sure. Alright, so a protectorate asteroid mining base is offering to defect. I don't have the MC Kate cap for this, but I figure what I do, because I'm not going to we'll pay... Open the channel. Yes, yes, I'll, uh, you I'll talk to you in a moment, Sonny, right? But so long as you don't yes, stand this is in a lot way, of volatiles, but 4MC for this? Uh, I'm not so sure. So, decommission hab. Bingo, decommissioning. Um, awesome. And then I'm also stealing one from them on Phobos, which I will give to the Resistance in order to compensate for the fact that I'm borrowing one of the ones on Mercury. So now it will take, I think, a couple of months for me to stop paying the two MC upkeep for that one that on that asteroid. But that hopefully put a decent dent in their water and volatiles income. I'm going to take away about another 40 and 40 by taking away their base on Phobos. Going off the grid. Sending people to ground occasionally I just stay to loyal clear to the things cops. up. I don't like having all my councillors detected. Molten core fission one. I have won't be using. We found and are investigating Xenoform Alpha Ten. So one who's been on Earth for a while at this point. What are you doing? You're enthralling the public in Brazil. Thirty percent chance. Well, hopefully you don't succeed. I, I'm happy with the academy and what they're doing to Brazil. Actually, they've, apart from the inequality being high, they're doing pretty well in Brazil. Yeah, the academy's just the academy's making Brazil a decent place to be. So hopefully, the enthralled public doesn't work. And there we go, Hidalgo base on Phobos, which is a bit shit, but we will fix it and sell it to someone else. Phobos premium. Ultra base pre owned. Alright, so I'm going to fix this, build some stuff, and then trade it to someone that we like, hopefully, depending on which counselors we can find. 102 is too high. 102 is too high, but we're already over the cap at the moment, so hopefully within the next couple of days I can sell this off and no one will be any the wiser. Alright, so I give Fiona this Mafia organization, and she gives me boost, uh, believes I'm being very generous, and forgives me for the fact that I took her base on Mercury. Uh, however, she doesn't want any habs from me for some reason, so we'll complete the trade, but I'm also talking to Jeune d'Arc Station. Who owns Jeune d'Arc? Because I'm not going to defend it for you. It is a resistance station. Oof. Are you over the hate cap? You are very much over the hate cap. <laughs> oh, a lot of these people are. Well, hopefully someone's willing to buy my pre owned station. We will save our world. You absolutely even will. as you thoughtlessly plunder. Uh, let's give you Phobos Premium pre owned. Phobos Premium Ultra Base pre owned. You think that's generous? Will you give me Marie you'll give me Marine Company barracks for it? I'll check, check if you have any good orgs, otherwise I'm going to loot you of your boost. Um, and you can have this station that I took from someone else that I didn't like. The answer is that I can get an MC Science and Material Science Research boosting organization, uh, and 42 boost, which I will need later uh, to support a tourist economy in space, but more on that in a future episode once we get into our next uh, initiative initiatives. Uh, so that's a pretty good deal. So we'll complete that. That brings us back under 100 MC utilization which is a little more comfortable. I don't want to go much further than that, um, but remember, a lot of our combat ships are going to be retired, a lot of the uh, marine ships are going to be retired. 
uh, and rebuilt, which will also temporarily bring this down. And I don't want to build any truly new stations now. I want to upgrade the one I took from the resistance on Mercury. All the remaining cap, it's going to be reserved for upgrading T2 stations to T3s, because those will be our defensible fortifications from which we prepare to move into the next phase of the initiative's grand plan. And that will come with Muscatovka. All right, we have another attempted invasion uh, intervention, this time by an enemy corvette. Violent laser cannon, violent laser battery against the lancet fish and the dolphin. We will repeat our same tactics, ramping the initial engagement velocity up to 600 meters per second. 550, 560 is appropriate. Disperse cloud, confirm. Priority. Keep the bay doors closed. No reason to prompt him to maneuver at all. This is a more dangerous ship than the gunship. It's got twice the armament and some more armor. So hopefully it's made of valuable substances. Okay, we're holding, we are holding, we are holding, we are holding, we are holding. We're engaging. Let him rip. And keep the nose pointed forward. Okay, it's maneuvering. We are almost Winchester. Let's see if it's got the maneuverability to avoid this. Turns out not. Like, you can keep trying, bro. See, this is the thing about missiles. They are so useless once you want to project power because you empty your magazines so quickly. But for this sort of orbital defense work, Hard to fault them in this sort of in this sort of scenario. Now, once we engage more than one alien ship at once, once they have overlapping PD, serious problem. But for the moment, I'm happy with how this is going. Okay, this is a bit of a sad situation. Uh, Victor 71 is going after the fleet that we just used to clean up the protectorate stations. But the protectorate station is so bad, no one wants to buy it, and we spent too much DV getting there to get back with the old chemical rocket designs. So we're basically stranded, but we still have missiles in the tubes, so we'll take one last one with us. Hopefully it blows up Maria Theresa Station rather than waiting for me to decommission it. That would save me 120 days of MC utilization. Okay, we'll stick with our usual maneuver. Let him close to his next maneuver node. Actually, we might even go one more node, just because we only have two launches this time. Don't want to take risks. Let's fire off. Let's fire off half of the magazine. Just in case we can snare one more gunship after this, which would be hilarious. Hopefully this is enough to get him. It is. Alright, we might be able to snare one more before we run out of ammo and are finally done. But for the moment, we're still over the MC hate uh, cap, so we're not going to lose hate from losing anyway, so we may as well take the kills and inflict the tiny little bit of attrition that we are. Alright, this should be even more one-sided. This is around Mars with my marine transport, which doesn't have magazines, against a lone gunship. Really not sure about how this one will go, but we'll give maximum initial velocity, just to give our missiles some real uh, heft, some real starting velocity closing the distance. We'll fire as late as possible. We'll split it into two halves, 
six and six, once before and just course, once after. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get a kill here. Otherwise, we lose Marines, unfortunately, for nothing, because we're not going to bleed off hate, losing a transport while we're over the cap. Muskarovka cannot come soon enough. All right, we're at 900 meters range, so we're going to fire six and six. Slow down time a bit. That's enough. It'll now maneuver. No, it's not going to maneuver. All right, we'll fire. There we are. There it is maneuvering. All right, missiles are all the way. The marine transports have very little armor on them. All right, missiles going into final burn. It's going to be close. At least he's not pointed forward, so he can't PD with his forward array. We got him. All right, that's good. That's that's hate bleed off potential that was not wasted, and just that little bit more attrition on the alien fleet. Now there will be a second wave. Um, once the original sort of gunships that they started or have built to this point start getting used, they will adapt, they'll build a new array of warships that are capable of easily destroying the sort of stuff I have now, but for the moment, I'll take it. Keeping up the tempo, Lancet Fish and Dolphin again engaging a gunship, this time the Resounding Concord, defending one of our two shipyard stations. Maskirovka, which will end this insanity, is a couple of weeks away, as is the decommissioning of a couple of captured locations, which will lower us below the cap, but for the moment, let's bag ourselves another gunship. By now you probably know how this story goes. Lull them into a false sense of security. And then since we're defending a station, I just emptied the magazines. Welcome once again to Earth. And the Suicide Squad gets another engagement. Uh, completely stranded, without enough propellant outside Maria Teresa. Maybe we would be able to save them with some shenanigans, but I think we should just send them into glorious battle against the Furious Squall. Alright, distance to target is 900 meters, missiles away. Oh. Whoops. Missiles away. Now, there are some backup missiles on the uh, marine transport, but they are way back, so let's hope that these initial ones are enough to get the kill. The Vipers are burning. Alright, there we go, but now the only missiles we have left are on board the marine transport. <sighs> I'll take it though. I'll absolutely take it. Let's see what the loot is. 0.32. I'll take it. Oh man, they are determined to put me out of my misery. Stalwart Warden gunship engaging the Senate, the Balao, and the Cobia yet again. The only missiles I have are on board the Marine Transport, which means the bombers are probably screwed. And we are four days, four days away from hitting Maskarovka, at which point we would actually get some credit in terms of hate reduction for losing these ships. But that is okay. The Cobia starts way back because it's perceived to be a transport, which it is. So all we can hope is that the Senate and the Balao distract the fire long enough for Cobia to get into range with something meaningful and achieve something with its missiles. Although the Cobia can flee afterwards, it has a Pulsar engine. So I might be able to accelerate it into the engagement. get a little more velocity before we launch. And then if it survives the engagement, it might actually be able to go to another station. So let's go. 
Senate and Balao will die. That is the nature of the game. Um, is there no order by which I can ram him? I presume not. Anyway, marine transport should be burning. Flying under the station, hopefully. Yes. Plot intercept course. Great, now we're going to be like that. And then at about at his next maneuver node, it'll be missiles away. There we are. Fire everything. Okay, missiles are out. They're absolutely motoring, they've got serious velocity on them. Just hit him. Chalk up another one. And at this point, the Cobia can bravely... 3.4 exotics. Love it. Again, I don't know if I get to keep them. I haven't researched exotics, but I hope so. Um, Cobia, if its engines are still functioning, however, can leave as soon as I regain control of the fleet. And the other two... Um, Bon chance. All right, finally. Okay, Muscatrovka. Okay. <sighs> As you can see at this point, the aliens are sending just a few retaliation missions against Earth and other locations. Uh, let's have Mars is clean. Mercury, there's one destroyer. Uh, we don't have pers um, point defense, so that torpedo bay is a problem. That's all right. Um, it is what it is. We can now burn off hate at the very least, which is a good thing. But I'm actually, I'm kind of happy with the way this is going and that we've sort of destroyed a whole bunch of escorts, gotten a bunch of exotics, while being over the cap a little bit so as to prompt this sort of modulated response, but we're not so over the cap that they're going psycho and sending freaking uh, motherships and assault carriers at us yet. So we are in 2030 though. So that sort of stuff can start kicking in relatively soon. Uh, our research is not where it would be normally, but it's okay. And if we can push out tier three, that'll be a huge uptick in our... I'm just trying to get pull other factions into researching this with me and I'll choose the priority at the right time. The key is to get Colony and Ring soon and all the supporting tier three um, modules that go with them. That's the idea at least. Got another engagement outside with everyone's favourite uh, Lancet Fisher Dolphin. It really brings home the logistics the aliens are struggling with, because these will have been ships that were designed and built like five years ago, four years ago, long before we had combat ships in space, um, and have been burning for the better part of a year to get here. And they've probably been getting the memos as they fly that maybe the humans have figured this out, uh, but it's a bit late for them frankly. So I think you know how this will go. Alright, this is a fun one. The United States has declared war on Japan, presumably to try and throw the academy out of their number one nation other than Brazil. Uh, but Japan is allied to South Korea despite the servants controlling South Korea, and so South Korea is also at war with America, and so is North Korea because North Korea is allied to South Korea, because South Korea used to be controlled by the Academy and the servants never changed that. So, nuclear armed North Korea is acting as the shield of Japan against the uh, partially rebuilt American military. America's in bad shape. Well, the main problem is that it's got fractured cohesion uh, and its democracy level is down to anocracy. Oh, and it's blockaded. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. The US military cannot live the, leave the continental United States 
because they only have one navy at tech level 4.7 and the force they're fighting I think has three navies at tech levels 4.5 and 4.5. They're trapped. And we've leveled up, we're now engaging Sea Hunter, which is an Obsidian Shield class destroyer, two laser batteries and an alien point defense particle beam. Uh, still against our shitty chemical rocket interceptors, but you know what, they don't have to do anything. They just have to sit there and empty their tubes. And because they're on a station, they just reload after each engagement. This thing does have a little bit more armor and more combat acceleration. It's much heavier. This is an 18,000 ton wet mass destroyer. So we're starting to see the aliens tech up in terms of what they bring. They're starting to respond, but again, there's a lag. I do something, it takes them literally years for their defense industrial base out in the Kuiper Belt to register the requirement, redesign the ship, build a new one, dispatch it to the inner system. Like that cycle is so long that I can keep doing funny things for the immediate future. Let's see how this one goes though. Okay, we're getting close to the control node where we will engage. Okay, I think he's past the node. I don't see any reason for subtlety here. Let's just empty the tubes. We're firing so quickly, I'm assuming this is just VLS bolted to the side of our ship. Yeah, you better maneuver. So armor penetration is going to become a problem. So will point defense. But this should be a pretty constant string of arrivals after a period of time. Like around halfway through that volley. There, it's PD's doing a good job. But it can't stop everything. And here the salvos start to merge. Lancet Fish and Dolphin still in the bloody fight. I don't know how many times they've... <laughs> the crews on that damn station, the station must be 50% spare missiles by mass. We must be shipping them from Earth at such a prodigious rate because these guys are reloading constantly. Um, again, 1.6 exotics. Don't know if we get to keep it. Happy if I do. Repair. 18.1 days. Ooh, they may not be repaired by the time the next one arrives, but here's hoping. I will Good old Kinetic them. Research Core 2. And so, at last, I think it ends. We have no missiles. Um, we have two ships. I have 1.5 Delta V, so I can't ram him. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Canada. That's the least Canada type thing ever. And hey, the aliens have decommissioned that station for me. I thought I was going to have to wait another month. Amazing, we're at 95 MC used. After Maskarovka, we've got LC room secure. in the cap as soon as we get Tech 3 unlocked. That's... that's not bad. Okay, this... this is also probably a bridge too far. Uh, this is a single troop transport. Uh, the Cobia against a Silver Knife class destroyer. So uh, also probably a bridge too far, but we will give it our best shot. We'll have to fire relatively early because the lasers are just gonna cut through us. So the first maneuver node after a thousand meters, we fire 24 missiles, that's all we get. That's where we're firing from. Okay, tubes are empty. It has lasers, it has point defense. Let's see how this does. I don't think this is saturation. Yep, one hit. <laughs> uh, but that's all she wrote. Ramming speed, thank you very much. We won't hit him because he's got way too much speed in Delta V for us. Uh, I want to end the fight. No, he just wants to blow me up. Okay. Alright, well that should be another f bit of frustration out of their system. They're still above 50 though. 
although we last fixed that on 14 October 2029, so who knows where it is now. Establishing contact. You ooze selfishness from every pore, but Just so long as we don't sure stand in cool. our way, we good. Ah. Okay, we'll need to rebuild that because I like those bonuses. Oh, I think the boys in the lab will be happy with this one. Plus, we found out that with all the ships we've been taking out, I actually am sitting on 27.9 units of exotics. Between the fights that I filmed and did not film, that is what our attritional warfare has delivered to us. That is what I consider a payoff. We will need to harvest more of these materials from alien spacecraft. No doubt. It's been suggested we should farm exotics from the aliens already present in our solar system. Given their enormous value, even significant losses of ships and personnel in exchange for relatively small quantities of exotics will represent a favourable exchange. In light of this, the board has authorised you to scale up our shipbuilding program. And that, for me, is a mental switch when the initiative goes from hey, there's an opportunity researching ferrocytes to there is an economic incentive to go defeat the Hydra in space, even if we don't have a final solution to the threat that they pose just yet. And with Soren being rather excited over the prospect of incorporating alien technology into more of our designs, that's probably where I'll cut this episode. Uh, next episode, expect a bunch of interesting developments. Uh, we'll obviously go into cybernetics, we'll get more active in space, it should be time for some T3 economic development, and of course Eurasia has significant designs on the European Union. Hope you're enjoying, and I'll see you again soon.